Chapter 6. The Fortress of Talgis Fury still filled the mind of Drusilla as she left the corpse of the priest on the path wrapped in vines. She journeyed through the forest as she did numerous times before, but now with a much different mindset. Her friends, her family, the creatures of Phalaris had been slain by the harpies of Talgis and an immense fury overtook her mind. She moved along the path with an unmatched drive, using her powers to summon vines to remove any obstructions along the path. Drusilla was unable to clear her mind and meditate along her walk as she normally did when she trekked through the forest. Her mind centered on the nymph that was her closest friend, and she yearned for vengeance. She wanted justice for the nymph, and she knew she had to remove the threat from the forest. Several minutes passed as she continued along the path, but she eventually reached her destination. At the end of the path was a very crudely built structure, thrown together with wood that was found in the forest. Very bold to build a temple in the middle of his forest, muttered Drusilla as she assumed the structure in front of her was the temple. Her eyes glowed a vibrant, emerald green at the sight of what was before her. The wind was blowing slightly harder than normal, but that only confirmed that it was the temple to Talus up ahead. As she moved closer, she could make out all of the details of the area. Large, wooden walls were constructed around the makeshift temple. The wood was not planed or leveled, and it appeared to be made of some of the fallen branches and smaller trees from the forest. The temple was just as rugged, with various pieces of wood tied together with twine and rope to serve as the walls. Hay from the harpy nest served as the roof, and it was constructed on a small incline, giving it the appearance of being above everything else in the area. Here I am, she said before taking her first step toward the fortress. She made her way past the wooden walls to find two priests toiling away in a makeshift garden. Drusilla held her hands out and summoned two vines at the hands of the two priests. Caught completely off guard, the priests had no time to defend themselves. The vines wrapped around their necks, and without any resistance, Drusilla closed her hands and tightened her fist, with the vines constricting rapidly. The force was brutal, and the heads of both priests fell off and rolled onto the ground. Their bodies collapsed in the small garden as Drusilla smirked at her handiwork, never breaking stride toward the doors of the crudely built temple. She walked up the small incline and made her way to the wooden doors. She summoned vines from the ground directly beneath the crudely built structure. The massive, pulsating, forest green plants came up from the ground and wrapped around the doors. The hulking vines constricted quickly, shattering the two doors within its grasp and dropping the splinters to the ground at Drusilla's feet. Inside the temple, Drusilla immediately noticed three followers of Talgis standing in front of an altar. The temple was sparse with no seating or statues, only a small, wooden altar with the insignia of Talgis emblazoned in the center rested at the far end of the structure. The center of the three men turned and saw Drusilla Whisperleaf standing in a mound of splinters. The man, the abbot of the temple, laughed and shook his head in disbelief. So the god of Flora sends his only god touch to investigate? Questioned the abbot as he turned to see Drusilla standing in the doorway. Vines wiggled and moved around her freely as she stared at the abbot and the two priests to his side, with Drusilla focused on ending their course of destruction. The forests were damaged and Drusilla's ire was pointed at the abbot of Talgis. The abbot took a step away from the other two priests confidently. I'm sure you're just as frail as the majority of his ilk. Drusilla scoffed while staring down her brow at the approaching abbot. Keep coming forward and I'll show you just how frail I am, she threatened. The abbot halted and stood tall with an aura of arrogance. He looked down upon any follower of Phalaris, but he especially felt Drusilla was a waste. The abbot held his hands out with his palms facing Drusilla. Wind began to swirl around her, pushing her vines around and snapping a few of the smaller ones. The thicker vines, however, remained steadfast. With the wind still swirling and becoming a bit more violent, Drusilla summoned more vines from the ground. Several of the new vines wrapped around Drusilla's ankles. The abbot pushed his arms forward rapidly, projecting a gust of wind at Drusilla that blew away the debris from the door. Two vines emerged from the ground quickly and wrapped around Drusilla's waist, helping to stabilize her. The vines around her ankles gave her a nice base to not get blown out of the makeshift temple, but the other vines around her waist kept her in the doorway. The wind blew harder at Drusilla as she bent her knees to brace herself further. She smiled menacingly as she kept her eyes trained on the abbot as he increased the velocity of his wind. You cannot hold out much longer, God touched. The power of Phalaris pales in comparison to Talgis, he shouted. The wind picked up again with Drusilla forced to summon more vines from the ground. An evil smile came over the abbot as he watched Drusilla defend herself with more vines. He continued to increase the force and power of the winds, eventually taking away the wooden walls at the front of the makeshift temple as well as the roof overhead. The clouds kept the skies gray as Drusilla was now completely engulfed with vines. Her vibrant emerald eyes were now covered by vines as her whole body was wrapped in vegetation. 
Wind swirled around the temple with the wall splintering away. The vines around Drusilla pushed in the wind, and after several more seconds, the vines unwrapped. Yes, unravel just as you should and blow away like the splinters of the forest, screamed the abbot. The vines descended into the ground, but to the abbot and priest's surprise, Drusilla's body had vanished. The abbot walked forward to where Drusilla was defending herself, kicking around at the ground at the tattered vines at his feet. Where did you go? he inquired, curious to where her body was. Perhaps the wind was so violent it blew away her essence, joked one of the priests. The youthful priest stepped forward, still in awe at the power of the abbot. You will have to show me how you did that. The abbot smirked and shook his head. Stay on your guard, priest. Until we find her body, she's still a threat. The youthful priest shook his head, disagreeing with the abbot. I'm sorry, but I don't think you need to be so humble. That was impressive. The abbot smiled when suddenly, from beneath the feet of the second priest, thick vines emerged rapidly and engulfed the follower of Talgis. Within a split second, the vines pulled the priest into the ground, leaving a hole in the wooden floor. The abbot and the other priest were stunned. Both followers of Talgis glanced down at the ground when the planks beneath their feet began to quake. Vines sprung up underneath the other priest, immediately encapsulating him and pulling him into the ground. In the center of the makeshift temple, the wooden planks on the floor splintered and exploded into the air as vines sprung up, carrying the god-touched follower of Phalaris. Her eyes glowed as she smiled at the abbot, who immediately summoned the wind to combat Drusilla. Unless you can conjure up a storm capable of leveling this entire forest, you will not live through our encounter, stated Drusilla ominously. She showed a power that no follower of Phalaris ever imagined, and now the abbot of Talgis was in grave danger. The abbot swung his arms at Drusilla, sending heavy gusts after heavy gusts at the god touched, with Drusilla shrugging it off. Without moving a muscle, Drusilla summoned massive vines from the ground to strike the abbot firmly. Each vine hit him in the face and torso like a whip being cracked, stunning the abbot. After a few strikes from Drusilla, the gusts stopped and the abbot was staggered. Drusilla opened up her arms and brought forth a massive vine from beneath the abbot. It wrapped around his arms and his torso and hoisted him into the air. The vine swung wildly, slamming the abbot's head into the ground and spilling his blood onto the wooden splinters. Strike after strike of the abbot's head into the ground sent his essence to Vesia and removed the threat in the forest. The wind from the abbot toppled the makeshift temple, but the vines from Drusilla ended any threat from Talgis and his followers. The massive vine that ensnared the abbot held his battered corpse in the air for Drusilla to see. With blood pouring down his face and into his hair before dripping to the floor, Drusilla smiled at her handiwork. She had delivered the evil from the forest, and now she needed to communicate with the high priest. How he allowed an evil force into the forest was something he would need to answer for. Script Crib Publishing would like to thank you for listening to By Gods and Kings. For more information on By Gods and Kings, please feel free to visit our website, bygodsandkings.com. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, both at By Gods and Kings. <laughs>